Hello everyone and welcome back to the Central Florida Zoo. A lot of things have opened back up and I wanted to check out the zoo and its full experience. Let's go! So it looks like the carousel still is not open and they've changed it up. We entered that way the last time, but this time we go this way to the zoo entrance. It's true, there is no zoo without you. So if you have a local zoo and it's open, make sure you go visit it because these animals need the money from your ticket so they can keep caring for them. So visit your local zoo. It's a lot of fun. So the zip line and all that stuff is open. Just nobody's partaking in it right now. I'll wait for Brandon for that one. And I'm in. I'm excited to have a relaxing day at the zoo. I've been wanting to come back because they said some of the reptile houses and all that stuff has opened back up. So I wanted to come. It is quite the drive for us or else I would be here probably way more often. So it looks like the splash pad for the kids is back open. Um, and it looks like they've made it less one way, which is fine. Um, doesn't, oh, look at the butterfly. And it also looks like their summer camps are open because I saw some kids with counselors and all same shirt. So there's the kookaburro that we saw the last time. He's right there. I don't know if you can see him, but so it says their vocalizations establish territories to other family groups and is heard most often at dawn and dusk. So we missed that. <laughs> Aboriginal folklore tells how the kookaburro's song is a signal of the sky spirits to light the sun each morning and put it out each night. So that's really cool, actually. Thank you, Mr. Kookaburro. So it's actually another one right there, too. So the last time we were here, there was a lot of one ways, and now there's not. So I'm gonna get lost now. I kinda like the one ways. I was, I knew I saw everything, I hit every animal, but now I'm just gonna get lost. So let's see. It's not too hot today, so it's not too bad. And in here we have the crocodile monitor, but let's see. Oh, you know what? He's, I see his tail way, let me see if I can, way back there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. We'll still talk about it. Monitor lizards are the only reptiles besides snakes that have forked tongues. The forked tongue heightens their sense and provides better precision when trying to locate prey. What I love most about Central Florida Zoo is like these just beautiful pathways. Like it's so relaxing. And if this was closer, I would totally bring my homework here and just chill and walk around and look at animals when I need a break. That would be perfect. I wish it was a little closer. So we're at the American alligator. He's way back there. I don't know, the reflections is glass so but he's back there um but i couldn't see him in the other angle so this is all we got so we'll talk about the american alligator it says the female will lay 20 to 50 eggs in the nest made of mud and vegetation heat from the rotting plants will help the eggs develop when hatched the young are about eight inches long can crawl and catch food on their own for protection they will remain with their mother for up to two years there's an up close one. So these are the Orinoco crocodiles. So he looks pretty fierce. That's now small, but I'm sure it's rough. Uh, this crocodile is similar looking to the American crocodile. This species is considered South America's largest predator. Males have been reported to reach up to 16 feet and females over nine feet. On average, males weigh over 800 pounds and females just under 
500. That's a lot of power in that tiny crocodile. But this guy's moving, he's the American crocodile. So these are distinguishable from alligators. These crocodiles have long, thin snout and are lighter in color and have two long teeth on the lower jaw that are visible when the mouth is closed. Among the largest in the world, crocodile males can reach 15 feet in length. Looks like he's done moving. Here's another angle just to kind of see like how big he is. He's like right there. So we still can't go near the cotton top tamarins, but that's because they are kind of genetically like us. So they could have an issue with the virus that's going around. So it makes sense that we can't go right close to them, but we can still see them and they're so cute. I love them so much. So now we're going down. I think this is my favorite part of the zoo. Just, I mean, look how like absolutely beautiful it is around here. And it's so relaxing. Look, there's a bench for me to do homework. I should have brought my book today. So we're over here by the bald eagle exhibit. They're so cute and fierce. <laughs> So let's read a little bit about them. The largest known eagle nest was found in Florida. It was nine feet across, 20 feet deep, and weighed over 200 tons. How can a pair of bald eagles build a nest, nest that huge? Known to reuse the nest, they keep adding sticks, building on to them for many years. I wonder if that's the one by Kennedy Space Center. Yep, this is the life right here. We are entering bear country. Bears are sleeping right now. They're up there. I feel like that didn't do much, but... Oh, I see movement. They might be waking up. We'll see. <laughs> I think they're just getting comfy again. All right, we're gonna head inside. Welcome to the Florida Back Black Bear. Habitat. So this is all about bears, but they are still sleeping. Wow, Florida black bears will normally consume 5,000 calories a day, but in the fall, it could be 20,000 calories a day. Here's a good view of them. They're out there taking a nap. Can't say I blame them. Maybe even got a little fan. Look at that. That's the life. Um, but the black bears, we got a pretty better view of them. So um, they're really cool. Taking a nap with that fan. Lucky ducks. <laughs> Looks like they're starting to wake up. Here's another angle. You get many different angles of these black bears. So, but this is also considered a quiet spot. No one's really over here, so I don't have to be too quiet. I mean, it's pretty quiet here anyway. So, but yeah, it says quiet area. So I will say they're not enforcing the masks too much. I mean, it's kind of hard. I mean, literally there's nobody around, but when people are passing, they kind of have them off and which is fine. I mean, just don't stay around me too long. Um, so, but I'm wearing it all times. I'm kind of used to it at this point. Um, I've been wearing it as much as I can whenever I'm out. So I get used to it for when we go to the parks and all that stuff. So in here is the clouded leopard. Okay, I see him. He's in his little hut. Apparently he just jumped, but I was changing my battery and I missed it. But that's okay. So let's read a little bit about them. Able to open their jaw wider than any other cat, their canines are most like that of the extinct saber-toothed cat. Uh, two inches long, they are the same size as those of a tiger, even though a tiger is 10 times larger in body size. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, he's going this way. So you can see him. He's just laying there. Hi, kitty. He's pretty. Hi. I see you. You can jump again if you'd like. <laughs> That'd be cool. Pretty nice day out. So he looks like he's just chilling. He or she, I'm not sure. They don't really say their names or anything. Or 
but like Animal Kingdom, I feel like they all have names. <laughs> Over here we have the red rutted lemur. They're all in the shade, so it's, I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see that. They are in there, so they are the ghosts of the forest. The word lemur means ghost in Latin. And once you hear the call of a lemur, you know why. Lemurs communicate with loud vocalizations and scent. You may notice them rubbing their bodies on branches um, as scent markings and it lets others know who's in the area. So very territorial animals. Oh look! Hi buddy! He's hanging. That is cool. Oh, pretty fast. So it's the red fretted lemur. <sighs> he doesn't like that sound that kids make him. Oh my god. <laughs> well, that's their territorial sound. <laughs> that's for sure. Are you gonna be quiet now? <laughs> I know you didn't like that noise that kid made. Thank goodness for go for a stabilization because I totally jumped. Like, <laughs> So we have our ring-tailed lemurs over here. Have you ever seen? Oh, they're cleaning each other. It's kind of cute. So, have you ever seen Madagascar? you know what these guys look like <laughs> so the sun worshiper the temperature in the forest can be cold at night to warm up before foraging ringtail lemurs will gather in open areas and sit with their bellies towards the sun and their arms and legs stretched out to the sides definitely seen that pose before so over here he's way back there in the shadows right there <laughs> we have the radiated tortoise so, so this is a rare tortoise. These tortoises are severely endangered due to habitat loss, poaching for food, and over-exploitation in the pet trade. It is estimated that mo more than 45,000 adult radiated tortoises are harvested each year. That's kind of sad. Over here we have the lesser spot-nosed Gwenon. Gwenon, I'm not sure how to say that. Um, but he's back there. Living in the dense vegetation makes it difficult to see one another. In addition to vocalization, tail positions, and facial expressions, the group relies heavily on complex head movements to communicate. While their white facial patches are easily seen when flashed among the leaves. That's smart. The way these animals adapt. It's so cool. Oh, he's coming this way. <gasps> Aww. He's, I like his little button nose. That's really cute. Hi, buddy. Weren't those lemurs loud a minute ago? He's right there. He's their neighbor, so. <laughs> yeah, go in the hammock. Treat yourself. <laughs> Relax. Oh. He just wants to be in the shade, I think. I'm not sure. Last time we were here, I did not notice these little planters. I would totally have that in my backyard. That's really cool. So over here we have the African Crested Porcupine and they're awake. That is so rare. Every time I walk by them at Animal Kingdom, they are sleeping. So displaying their weaponry for all to see, porcupines have long quills that act as guard hairs and form a skirt to protect. When the quills aren't erect, the porcupine appears three times bigger the quills do shed, and when a porcupine shakes, loose quills will fall off, but without deadly force. Little thing you don't know about me is I love cactuses. <laughs> when we went to Disneyland for the first time and we saw a cactus, I freaked out. It was great. <laughs> so over here, we have the cheetah or leopard. I'm not sure. He's pacing. Oh, there he is. <laughs> you might hear the keeper coming for to drop off that some food. Good. He literally stopped in his tracks. <laughs> but like that. So that was the Amur leopard. So they've got this, like I saw him all the way down there. He's got this whole area. So the name of this cat is taken from the Amur region located along the Chinese-Russian border. These leopards are agile climbers and can leap 10 feet in the air or up a tree. 
They are primarily nocturnal and therefore may appear less active during the day, except for right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know what way to go. I guess I'll go, well, I know Coral's over here, the sloth, so let's see if we can see Coral. <gasps> She's all the way up there. She's sleeping, but I'm still the happiest clam. So if you can see that lighter bark, that's her. That's Coral, she's sleeping. So as you can see, I have my sloth shirt on today. I made sure to wear it, but I mean, I already know this stuff, but <laughs> slow moving and mainly nocturnal. Sloths sleep up to 20 hours a day. They eat, sleep, and give birth while hanging by their tree, um, by their three inch claws. Rarely coming down from the trees to the forest floor, sloth will descend just once a week to go to the bathroom. They said defecate, but I think going to the bathroom sounds cuter. <laughs> so we've got a fossa right there. He is sleep. Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right, well, while he sleeps, let's read about him. So it says copycat. At first glance, fossa looks like a cat. However, they are more closely re related to the mongoose. Active during the day or night, these solitary animals can grow up to six feet long from nose to tail tip and weigh up to 26 pounds. Yeah, I'm talking about you. These, they can even walk like up here. I don't know if this is theirs too, but I don't see another sign, so I'd assume this is the fossa exhibit as well. So over here we have the Indian rhino. He's uh, in the water and I can't say I blame him. So an Indian rhino can weigh more than two tons. That's likely heavier than your car. But these solitary giants are at risk from people killing them for their horns and make their habitat harder to live in. Horn, the rhino horns are just like your fingernails. You can have my fingernails instead of hurting these poor rhinos. Here's another view of the rhino just enjoying the water. I don't blame him. All right, let's go say hello to the giraffes. Giraffes, a giraffe's head can weigh over 25 pounds and is six feet away from the heart. To get the blood flow to the brain, the heart beats 170 times per minute. The neck also has a complex vascular system to prevent excess blood flow to the brain when the giraffe lowers its head to drink. Interesting. So we're over here in the butterfly garden. This is a nice place just to relax, do some schoolwork if I brought it, but I didn't. I should have. This is pretty. So some areas are still blocked off, so that probably means there's a animal that can be affected by the virus. So we don't want to go too close to them, but they've got their little donkeys over there. So we're by the cheetah exhibit, but there's people over there, so they are sprinters uh, for the cat world. Cheetahs have a flexible spine, which allows their front legs to extend far forward with each stride. Their claws are hard and sharp like cleats for traction, and their long tail is used as a rudder to steer and turn. All this plus enlarged nostrils, lungs, and heart keep them um, to cover 22 feet in one stride and run at speeds at 60 miles per hour. And there they are. Just relaxing for now. I don't blame you, cat. I don't blame you, cat. It's, I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> so relaxing is good. It's humid today. It's not like terribly hot, it's just humid. So over here we have the warthog section, like the Lion King show. He's just chomping away. So rather than dig their own dens, warthogs prefer to locate abandoned aardvark holes in natural burrows to raise their young, sleep, and escape from predators. These burrows also offer shelter from the heat of the day or the warm place for cold nights. So over here we have the cougar. He's right in there. Um, often called puma, panther, and mountain lion. The cougar is the largest of the small cat species and does not roar, but will hiss, hiss, growl, and purr. As a predator, 
the cougar plays an important role in controlling and maintaining healthy prey populations, especially white-tailed deer. But he's sleeping. It seems like that's a trend today. Maybe I should go home and take a nap after this. <laughs> this guy's awake though. This is the wreathed hornbill. He is cool looking. Look at like his, his it's like a wreath. That is neat. So let's read about this guy. The wreath hornbill, females will wall themselves into a tree cavity using mud and sticks leaving only a small hole for the male to insert food. She keeps the nest clean by dropping all waste outside the small opening. The young will remain in the hollow until they are fully fledged. Oh, there's a squirrel. Is he going to go in there? Remember the last time we were here, the... He sure did. The squirrels stole the tortoise's food. Yeah, you tell him. Get out of my area. Don't come near my food. <laughs> that was a cool scent. Wow. Wow, there's like two squirrels in there. But that's even cooler. He's cool. Hi. Oh. We tell him. Wow. So it looks like the gift shop is open. So I ended up getting a patch. I have a jean jacket. So. Um, they did have a few shirts. They had a sloth one, but they didn't have my size. But I might go back around and look again. So over here we have the silvery cheeked hornbill. You can see them right there. So the edges of the bill are notched like saw for grasping and tearing. At one observed silvery cheeked nest, it was estimated that a male delivered 24,000 fruits to the female and chicks over 120 days that's about 200 fruits per day i love fruit you can bring me some fruit so here's our friendly macaws so the, there is a debate over why some macaws visit clay licks research has shown they use clay licks to help reduce the absorption of dietary toxins however recent studies indicate the soil is proving an important source of sodium it's always good to have sodium. So these buddies here are hyacinth macaws are found in semi-wooded areas of palm swamps of central and of central part of South Africa. They are the largest macaws and are one of three blue macaws found in South America. Unlike other macaws, they do not have large bare facial patch, only a small yellow ring around uh their beak so that's really cool these guys are cool looking yeah you're on camera <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i'm nodding and he's nodding yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so now we're going to enter the herbatorium. There's an entrance only and an exit only, so. So we're in the herbatorium and there's a Gaboon Viper. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They can weigh up to 40 pounds, making them one of the heaviest snakes in Africa. Well, don't let their bulky appearance fool you. They're very quick. I can see that. Oof. So I love that this snake has the word beautiful in their name. So it's red and green bands help camouflage these snakes by mimicking shadows cast by the sunlight through the forest canopy. This exhibit's just really cool because theming, it's an Egyptian cobra. And he's hit hiding in there. That is a daring white tree frog that is on a emerald tree boa. <laughs> I know snakes and Reptiles are not everyone's favorite, so I made sure to not spend too much time in there. So, I did a few. So, sorry if you're scared of those. So, I think I've seen everything I can see today in the gift shop one more time because I saw something on the way out that I didn't notice on the way in that I wanted to get. So, I'm going to go back over there 
and then call it a day. So I bought one more, well, a few more items that we might be putting into use somehow. Um, not quite sure yet. I know it's all very cryptic, but um, you might see what we're gonna do with it. I don't know, I gotta collect a few first. So that about does it for today. Um, I haven't asked in a while and we've gotten quite a few new subscribers. So um, comment, there's a train around here. <laughs> comment down below your favorite animal because I wanna know because I love animals. Um, other than that, the video up above is the last time we went to Central Florida Zoo. So you can compare the two to see how different it is. And that video over there is a video that YouTube recommends for you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell to become a super subscriber. And until next time, see you real soon.